Good everybody. So uh, we've been discussing dendritic processing, right? In the last class, uh, we began discussing the signal propagation of dendrite. We have uh, written the, or derived the uh, cable equation, right? Uh, so the so cable equation is a partially differential equation in both space and time. Uh, but since to solve the uh, full equation with both uh, uh, special temporal solution, it will be more difficult. So we just uh, began solving it in under steady state conditions. So as a purely spatial uh, problem with the spatial solution. So in the last class, we began with uh, steady, deriving the steady state solution for the infinite cable, then semi-infinite cable, right? Then a finite cable. Uh, so when you have a finite cable, you have boundary conditions. So we looked at three kinds of boundary conditions. One is uh, sealed end, other is killed end, right? Basically, the, at one end, if the current is zero, right, or the voltage is zero. The third case is arbitrary case, where the far end has a loading resistance, as shown in this picture, has a loading resistance RL. So the voltage there is finite, the current there is finite, and they, they don't go to zero. So when this is the most general case, right? In that case, uh, when you inject a DC current I naught, what is the steady state distribution of voltage along the cable? So, so that, that's what we need to derive. So let us do that. Uh, so assume that the loading resistance is RL, right? And assume again that the voltage distribution is of this form. A cos H L minus X plus B sin H L minus X. Uh, so now the boundary conditions are, we don't know what the boundary conditions are because we don't know what is the current and what is the voltage uh, at the far end. But we only know that the ratio is equal to RL. VL by IL is equal to RL. That's all that we know. So we'll, but so initially we'll just assume that uh, the voltage here is uh, VL, right, at the far end, and the voltage at the input, the mouth, is V0. So if you plug in these two things in this equation, right, uh, you get Vx is equal to VL at x equal to L. So if you plug this in sin H of x equal at x equal to L, this part becomes zero, so this part becomes one. So VL becomes A, so that's a straightforward. Now at x equal to zero, Right, uh, you plug this in here, you get V naught is equal to uh, A cos HL plus B sin HL. That's what you have here. And if you solve for B, then you get B is equal to V naught minus VL cos HL by sin HL. So in the process, you are expressing the solution uh, parameters, the coefficients A and B, in terms of V naught and uh, VL. But remember that uh, the only input information given is uh, I naught and the cable parameters like R infinity and length and all that. Both V0 and VL have to be calculated further. We are just assuming them as some kind of intermediate variables right now. So we got that uh, A equal to VL and B equal to this whole quantity. If you substitute these two things back in this VM of X equation, <coughs> you get this expression, uh, VL times cos H L minus X plus right in the numerator V0 minus VL cos HL by sin HL in, into sin HL minus X. So if you move sin L to the, the numerator, you get uh, VL cos HL minus X sin HL, sin HL plus V0 minus VL cos HL into sin HL minus X. So you redistribute this a little bit. You see that uh, you have, here there is a VL term, VL and some factor. And here you have a V0 and factor of sin HL minus X and again VL cos HL minus x. Now, if you take the VL part out, you get uh, VL times cos HL minus x sin HL minus cos HL sin HL minus x. So if that, if you see this, this is your uh, sin A minus B or sin H A minus B uh, kind of expression. Right, so sin L into cos HL minus x minus cos L and sin HL minus x becomes equal to sin H of, uh, sorry, sin H of L minus of L minus X, that is sin H of X. So that way you can simplify it, uh, this expression here. If you plug this in, you get a much simpler expression. So VL times sin H of X plus V0 times uh, V0 times sin H of L minus X by sin H of L. Okay, so this is V of X, but still it is in terms of VL and V0 and we don't know what they are. So we need to find out what is V0 and what is VL. So we know that the axial current anywhere in the cable is given by minus one by RA times W by dou X. 
outside the mouth at the input uh, so you need to evaluate this at x equal to 0 so if you do that and uh, so if you differentiate this and substitute x equal to 0 so note that uh, this is a confusion that arises right we are doing dou v by dou small x because the original space variable is small x and uh, capital x is a electronic electrotonic distance which is right a small x by lambda so you need to take care of that when you do this differentiation that's why when you differentiate this to small x you have this one by lambda factor coming out because of uh, the way capital x is defined okay so if you differentiate this uh, you get this whole expression and if you plug in x equal to 0 so small x equal to 0 is same as capital x equal to 0 so if you do that um, so we'll uh, calculate the input current the current flowing at the load is uh, iix at x equal to l which is given by so if you plug in uh, in on the same derivative if you plug in x equal to capital l so the capital x is equal to capital l so you get this expression now since the load current is equal to uh, uh, vl by rl so right we have um, this whole thing is equal to vl by rl because this current at l at this far end that's a load current that is equal to VL by RL. So that will let you relate, uh, that will relate VL and V0. So right now we, we, we have VL and V0 both as independent variables. We don't know, now we are able to relate them, right? By calculating the I, I here, which is axial current and setting that equal to the loading current here, which is VL by RL. So if you do that, then we can calculate for VL and express it in, in terms of V0. So you get this expression. So if you bring down RL, you get this expression. V0 by R infinity by RL uh, times NHL plus RL, uh, sorry, this RL will disappear. Uh, we have taken RL down, okay, times cos HL. So now, so we have calculated VL, now plug it back into the VX expression. So think is there's a lot of algebra in this uh, arbitrary case. That's why I said we'll do it in a separate class because it takes a bit of time. And all this to work out on the board takes even longer. So I'm trying to not to go too fast because it's a bit confusing. Okay, so you calculate VL here and you plug it into the original uh, VM equation right uh, here. So you get uh, V naught by this R infinity by RL, right? Sin HL plus just cos HL. If you plug that in here uh, for uh, VL, and then redistribute the terms a little, you get this expression. So this looks pretty complicated, but this also can be simplified further. Let's see how it is done. So take this complicated expression. Uh, so in the numerator, you have R infinity by RL sin HL times sin HL minus X, right? Plus uh, cos HL uh, times sin HL minus X uh, plus sin H of X. Right, so sin h of uh, so this expression cos h l um, uh, times sin h l minus x plus sin h x. That is, so this is the second term and this is the third term. This in the numerator. If you take these two and expand sin h of x as sin h of l minus of l minus x, and if you use a subtraction uh, no, formula. You get uh, cos HL sin HL minus X plus sin HL cos HL minus X minus cos HL sin HL minus X. So if you cancel out these two, you get this whole thing is equal to sin H of L cos H of L minus X and plug it back in here, you get slightly simplified expression. So now you see that sin H of L is common in the numerator, so that can be cancelled out with the denominator here, right? So you can cancel of uh, sin HL here with this. So if you take that out, you have uh, sin H of <clears throat> R infinity by RL times sin H of L minus X plus cos H of L minus X by R, R infinity by RL uh, times sin H of L plus cos H of L. So this is the final formula for VM of X for the finite cable with arbitrary loading. So we still have a factor of V naught we don't know what V0 is. We only know I know what I0 is. So let us find out what V0 is. So the thing is, the method of finding V0 is just like what we have done for the tilled end and the sealed end. 
So basically, you need to find out the input impedance, right? And once you have input impedance, you know the current. Uh, so V naught is nothing but uh, R in times I naught. So we need to find out R in. So let us do that. <coughs> so to find out R in, we need to calculate the axial current at the input. So that is basically R in. So uh, axial current is given as minus one by R A times dou V m by dou X. At x equal to zero, so this is what we need to calculate. So <clears throat> we know that the V m is given by this complicated expression. If we differentiate this with respect to small x, right? Uh, you get this. So you get one by lambda factor because you are differentiating capital X by small x. <clears throat> so if you do that, uh, you get this expression. And note that you know from our previous uh, class, we know that R a lambda is nothing but R infinity. Okay, so if you do that, uh, this is basically I naught, and I naught is equal to V naught by R infinity into this whole term. So uh, uh, R in is nothing but V naught by I naught. So th this whole thing will go to the other side, right? So you have R in is equal to R infinity. This is R infinity times uh, R infinity tan H L plus R L by R R L tan H L plus R. Infinity. This is expression for Input impedance, so that's that's what we have here. So basically, for the finite cable of electrotonic length R uh, L capital L, and in, in, the, in the the impedance uh, parameter R infinity, right, and during the resistance of uh, R L, and input voltage of V naught. So we, this is the voltage, and the R in is uh, given by this formula, and let us see that uh, it is consistent. That is. If your uh, L goes to infinity, right? So then it's no more a finite cable; it will be semi-infinite cable. So then R in is equal to R infinity, which is correct. That's because if L goes to infinity, a tan H L becomes plus one. So the numerator and denominator just cancel out, right? You have R in is equal to R infinity, which is correct, but becomes semi-infinite cable. If L goes to zero, right? Then uh, tan H is zero. So therefore, uh, you have R L by R infinity. R infinity, R infinity get cancelled off. So input is R L. Basically, that means that your cable is of your uh, is of zero length. So there is no cable. So the only thing left is your input resist, the loading resistance R L. So R in will be loading resistance. So we are just doing a consistency check to make sure that the formula is correct. So it it's, it it is it satisfies that con consistency check, right? And uh, So now let us uh, look at uh, uh, yeah. So now let us look at the more general case. So we have looked at three cases. One is the sealed end, then killed end, then arbitrary loading, right? So now we are able to we are in a position to look at a more general case. So the, actually, the more general case is uh, is like this. If you have a dendritic tree, like shown in the upper figure, upper part of the figure. And the corresponding representation in terms of cables is divide the whole tree into like small segments, okay, like like that, and represent uh, each part, each segment as a cylinder with uniform properties. So each of them will have like some R infinity and you know electrotonic length L and so on and so forth. So once you have that, you can define the whole tree into a bunch of these cylinders. So now ultimately, what you need to solve is if you If you have synapses right onto this, or if you have synapses onto this uh, cable, right you know, onto this dendrite, then if an action potential comes here, right that will release new transmitter here, and that will open some channels, and channel opening will effectively in you know inject some current into the dendritic branch there. Okay, so so basically what the other synapses of, of other neurons are doing. Is inject current into the dendrites uh, at various points wherever there is a synapse, and these currents could be positive currents or negative currents, right? And uh, so now these currents produce waves, and these waves propagate right uh, down the cable, and the waves all reach to the soma. So this is what we need to ultimately model, but that is obviously a pretty hard problem to solve theoretically. We'll resort to numerical simulations beyond a point. So what we'll do, what we have been doing for the last couple of classes is we are not even talking about any propagation because propagation means a solution in time. We are only talking about steady-state solutions. 
So until now, we have only worked out like the simplest case of a that is steady-state solution of a small finite uh, cable segment with uniform properties, homogeneous. So now, we have, now how do you just outlining how you can extend this to more general tree? That is, if I give not a pulse current but a DC current, right? You know, something like that. Right, that is your. So let's say I one, I inject it here. Right, uh, what is the steady state voltage because of this uh, everywhere in the cable? So that's what we need to find out. So uh, right, and uh, so we so you can inject current anywhere in the cable. So we'll consider now a slightly simpler case where we inject current not anywhere in the tree, but at the mouth of the tree. Okay. Uh, so if I inject some I naught here, what is the voltage of all the cables all over the tree? This is what we'll we'll try to find out using the equation that we have derived so far. So let us look at uh, the simplest case. So where you have a main cable and uh, the current into this is uh, I naught and the length of the main cable, let us say, is L naught. These are electrotonic lengths, right? And it has its own R infinity. I'll call this R infinity zero. And uh, so that's all that you need to define the cable, right? I mean, that's what we've been using all along. So inject some current into this. So it will have some, I don't know, some voltage, uh, whatever the shape of the voltage. All this VM of X. Okay, and uh, so now that is for the main cable and then you'll have some similar expressions for all the cables, right? Uh, and so on. So how do you find out this whole thing? So and uh, so here we have the main cable, and then you have two other branches, which are also dendrites. And uh, and the only thing is these two branches have sealed ends. That means the dendrites uh, end here. So this is like closed at uh, these these two points. Now for this system with uh, just uh, three segments, what is the steady state uh, membrane voltage? So how do you do that? The first thing that you need to do is find out the input impedance of the two branches. Now the two branches are uh, sealed end, right segments. So we'll just take it that uh, we'll just use the formula that we derived in the last class. So which is uh, R infinity. So R, there is an R infinity one for uh, this cable here, and R infinity two for this cable and uh, so length of the for this cable is L1, uh, electron-tonic length, and this is L2. So you take that, so you can calculate it in that formula. So once you calculate the, it's, this is input impedance, right, of the two branches. Once you calculate that, as far as if you look at this system from this point, right, you can replace these two cables, the corresponding input impedances, R in one and R in two. So you end up with something that looks like this. Now you can obviously further simplify this by combining these two into uh, using the parallel resistance formula, and I get and you get this. So that is uh, basically this whole thing uh, becomes equal to loading resistance, right, for the main cable. So R L O. You calculate that. Then given RLO, so then what happens is you have a system like this, right? And uh, so you have, so the RLO, this is, uh, this is RLO. And this is the main cable. And you can find out the input resistance of the main cable using this formula. This is what we just derived a few minutes ago. Right. If you do that, then you have the input impedance of the main cable, so R in, right? And uh, the input current is V naught. So therefore, the in input voltage at the mouth will be I naught times R in. You get V naught. And once you get V naught, and uh, you know R L, which is nothing but R L O, right? And uh, you know uh, V naught. So you can find out the voltage, uh, steady state voltage of the main cable. Right, using this formula, right? And uh, so once you know the steady state voltage, what do we do next? You evaluate the steady state voltage, 
at the far end of the main cable, which is at the capital X is equal to uh, L, right, or L naught, right, which is the far end of the main cable. Now this voltage uh, is nothing but the so this voltage we'll call it uh, V12. That is, this is the voltage at the junction point where cable one and cable two meet the main cable. That is the zero. I will call this V12. And how do you calculate that? You just use the voltage formula for the main cable, and let the capital X is equal to uh, capital L, right? So if you plug this in, uh, this will be the voltage uh, at the mouths of the two branches, and uh, so you have the kind of V naught of this branch is V12. Personally, V naught of this branch is also V12. Right, so we know that, and uh, we also know the length of this is uh, L1 and length of this is L2. So, the, and this is sealed end. So, therefore, we know the formula for uh, steady state voltage distribution of the sealed end finite cable, which is this. So, we want to this voltage, and L1 is the length. So, th this is the formula that gives you the steady state voltage of this cable. So, now this is the formula for the steady state voltage of this cable. Okay, so like that, we are able to calculate the steady state voltage of the entire system, right? Given that you have some current I naught injected. Now, this can be expanded to uh, a more general case, right? I'll, uh, I'll see that, I'll show that here. So, if you have a big tree, like, uh, okay, so if you have a, so let us go through the rule, these rules. Right, first, first you do the upward pass, and that is from the terminals to the roof. Okay, well, how do you do? What do you do there? You compute all the input impedances sequentially in a recurrent fashion, and go all the way to the root node and find the input impedance of the entire tree. And once you find input impedance of the entire tree, and use your input current I naught, right, to find the voltage of the main cable. Uh, so let me let us look at a figure. Okay, so so this upward pass is nothing but it goes like this. So this is the typically a sealed end. So you know the input impedance at at this point, right? You calculate that, and that becomes loading resistance of this cable, right? So you use uh, the formula that we just derived. For the input impedance of arbitrary load, loading, so combine this and this, and you get input impedance at this point. And this becomes loading for this, so combine this and this, you get input impedance of this. So once you come to this point, you have R in here, right? So similarly, find R in at this point. So I'll call this R in one and R in two. Use parallel resistance formula, find the loading resistance of these two. So you get loading resistance here. Right now, this becomes loading resistance for this cable. So combine this and this, and you get R in here. So similarly, do the same thing for this whole thing. You get R in here. Do a parallel resistor combination of these two. You get loading here. So like that, you can recurrently uh, calculate the input impedance from the terminals all the way to the north of the tree and calculate R in here. The entire tree. So once you calculate R into the entire tree. Right, you multiply I naught, uh, so V naught is nothing but I naught times R in. So you get the V naught here. Once you have V naught, this segment now becomes an arbitrary uh, loading case with a finite, it's a finite cable. For where you have, you know the V naught, you know the RL, RL, the loading resistance here, right? And uh, uh, and uh, yeah, so V naught and you know V naught, you know V naught RL. So you can apply the same formula and find the voltage here. Then calculate the voltage uh, at the far end of the cable using the same formula. That becomes the V naught of this cable and this cable. So again, in the same way, recurrently you calculate uh, the voltage at uh, every segment uh, down the tree. Right. So you have uh, two passes: the upward pass where you go from the terminals. Yeah, so this upward pass where you go from terminals to the root, compute all the RNs, and at the root uh, you you use input current and RN and then find V naught, and then you apply the downward 
and start the download pass uh, where you compute vx for every branch rec recurrently and as you go from the root node to the terminals okay so this way you can calculate the steady state distribution of the entire tree but like i said ultimately we, we don't want steady state solution that's not enough we want a temporal solution so for that we'll depend on a numerical simulation uh, but uh, even for temporal solution will uh, so we'll we will we'll present a solution we'll solve it but we'll start with the simple case of an infinite cable right again when you inject a current how does the voltage wave produced propagate down the cable so there we won't use uh, <clears throat> dc current we'll use a pulse current if you give a small pulse of the current if i have a cable and give a small pulse of the current how does the how is the wave produced and how does it propagate along the cable so we'll do it in the next class but uh, for now let us have a short tutorial demo of the phase plane technique because it's very important we'll be using it uh, you know after a couple of classes we'll be using the phase plane technique a lot to understand the dynamics of a uh, simple neuron that is a two variable system there are a lot of very important neuron models uh, which are defined by two variables so which can be understood and uh, analyzed using the phase plane so now the you know ts uh, Sandeep and Sundari will give a demo of some of the place, uh, face plane um, uh, worked out examples.